Yeah, it's la it's live now. Okay. So uh, we need to start recording as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So very good afternoon, everyone. So today we are doing the fifteenth lecture of that satellite meteorology weekly online lecture series. Uh, today our speaker would be Sivin Balakrishnan sir uh, from IMD. Uh, before his talk, uh, I would like to invite uh, Professor Sameshwar Das sir, Secretary of SAMA, to give the welcome address. That stage is yours. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Swagata, and good afternoon to everyone. AVM. Uh, Professor Tagi Saab, uh, President of SAMA, uh, Dr. Bhatia Saab, the Chairman of the Advisory Committee of this lecture series on Satellite Meteorology, our speaker for today, uh, Dr. Sivin Balakrishnan, our organizing committee members, uh, Dr. Swagata, Dr. Rohini, Dr. Palome. Uh, good afternoon, and all the distinguished participants, we welcome you on behalf of the South Asian Meteorological Association and the Birola Institute of Technology, Mesra. As you know, this is the 15th lecture, I, I hope, 15th lecture. Yeah, 15th lecture. Uh, of the, yeah, series uh, uh, of the 20 lectures. Uh, and uh, all the participants, I hope you are regularly attending the lectures. Is almost like uh, a two third of the lectures uh, will be over by today. And all of you are familiar with the rules uh, for this uh, lecture series as Dr. Sivin is attending for the first time. So I may like to mention a few words uh, like, uh, you know, uh, for this lecture series, we have received more than, I think, 1800 registrations from 60 countries. And uh, as per our uh, uh, regulations and rules, uh, all the participants who will have at least 75% of the lectures will be given the certificate of participation. And also at the end of the lecture series, there will be a, a test conducted uh, for the multiple choice uh, uh, based upon the entire lecture series. And those who will score, uh, based upon their score, uh, they will be given further certificates for outstanding, uh, excellent, very good, good, etc. cetera. Uh, so these are the things. Uh, and we have been receiving a lot of uh, uh, hits on the YouTube. Uh, uh, I can remember that uh, till the last lecture, there were more than 2,500 hits on the YouTube uh, channel of Sama. That means uh, more than 2,500 people from different countries had viewed the lecture of Dr. Kelkar Sahab and Dr. Sarma. Uh, that was the first lecture. And similarly, for the last lecture, uh, also, we had a good hit. I think uh, it was, I think, more than 200 hits were there for the last lecture. But these numbers will keep on increasing as you know the time passes. Uh, therefore, lectures are very popular. And uh, today's uh, speaker is again from the IMD, you know, as he will be introduced shortly. Um, he has a working experience, you know, directly or personal experience on satellite technology before that. Before IMD, he was at NCMRWF when I was still in service. Uh, and afterwards, you know, he joined uh, IMD. So all of you uh, enjoy the lectures uh, and have a good time. So thank you very much once again. And on to you, Dr. Swagata. Thanks a lot, sir. I mean, you and uh, Taggy, sir, was, I mean, is the backbone of SAMA. So now uh, let's we invite uh, president of SAMA, ABM, uh, Dr. Ajit Taggy, sir. Sir, uh, please share a few words with us. Thank you, Swagata, and uh, very good afternoon, Bhatia Saab, uh, Dr. Swameshwar Das, organizing committee members, uh, and uh, all the participants. Well, uh, I'm happy that uh, the series of lectures uh, on satellite meteorology are progressing very well. This is being the 15th lecture. And uh, we have uh, see this have been planned so well that we have a mix of uh, 
resource persons delivering talks uh, right from uh, the basic institutions like commercial institutions IRS to the space application center NRSC um, from NCMRWF IITM IMD uh, and and uh, even the senior people who who are pioneers in these fields have delivered the lectures and we also have a operational people from IMD delivering the talks and Sibin is one of the young, bright uh, scientists who had the experience of numerical weather prediction, satellite and operational meteorology. So this is what the satellite meteorology, uh, uh, these training lectures are covering the all aspects uh, comprehensively from basics to the applications uh, and, and operations and various products which both researchers and operational people can use uh, in, in their uh, work. Uh, and also, it provides a platform for you to interact, network, um, uh, can uh, access uh, the resource persons uh, for further any clarifications are required, apart from the question and answer session. So make best use of it. It's very rare that you get such a good uh, mix of resource persons who, who deliver talks and share their ex expertise, experience, and also uh, communicate with you. So make best use of it and let me again compliment the organizing co committee members, uh, Rohini, um, Popalami, Swagata, of course, um, is, is there, very much there, uh, to, and Divya Prakash and many others who have been contributing uh, in organizing this series of lectures so well. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Now uh, it's time to... Uh introduce uh, uh, our speaker so let's say scare the screen first so is my screen is shared yeah yes sir. okay so today we uh, got uh, sri shivin balakrishnan scientist d from indian meteorological department he is obtained his btech in aerospace engineering from anna university and mtech in earth system sciences from iit Farag. He worked at the National Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting, uh, NOIDA, and IIT Delhi before clearing UPSC services and joining as Scientist B in IMD New Delhi in 2016. Currently, he is very much involved in the operational reception, processing, and dissemination of satellite data to end users, which is really very important. He is involved in the satellite product generation of Insat 3D, Insat 3DR, and OceanSat 3 satellites. In addition to the effective outreach of satellite products that currently is doing with us, utilization to forecasters and end users as well. Sri Shibin Balakrishnan is a member of CGMS on behalf of IMD, has attended various national and international conferences, and is a member of multiple scientific groups on active satellite data utilization for improved detection of extreme weather events. He is also involved in the operational validation of satellite data and generating satellite products to cater to specific sectorial applications. He is a member of the National Weather and Cyclone Forecasting Core Group. Today, his topic is also related to cyclone. Disseminating weather-related warnings to end users through weather bulletins and social media platforms. He is currently pursuing his PhD from Center for Atmospheric and IT Delhi. He has authored various research paper reports and research documents on operational weather forecasting. Uh, so now uh, I would like to invite Sri Shivin Balakrishnan for your talk. So please, uh, stage is yours. So, yes. uh, thank you, Swagata, uh, for this uh, uh, introduction. Uh, at this outset, I'd like to express my gratitude to the Sama to the Sama group for uh, uh, giving me an opportunity to uh, give my uh, bits about the uh, operational work. I'd also like to express my gratitude to uh, Aditya Agi sir, to Komishar Das sir, to Bhatla sir, Bhatia sir, and to the organizing committee uh, who have been uh, pretty much seamless in all these uh, arrangements of uh, right from the beginning about getting the information, the mail, and they were very much systematic. So I'd like to congratulate them too. 
uh, at this uh, uh, juncture, I'd also like to uh, invite all the participants, as uh, Somishar Das sir had informed about uh, a huge number of participants who are very much eager and attend, uh, involved in attending this. Uh, I've heard about the previous lectures also, so I have tried to keep my, uh, or I say slides or my presentation as simple as possible so that it can be easily understandable to any person who's uh, pretty new to this field. So now you can share the slide? Yeah. Uh, is it visible? No. Not yet. Yeah, it is coming. It started now, yes. Now you are able to see the full screen? Not, uh, yet. not yet. Okay. Uh, so it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, I am audible, right? Uh, is there any issue with the word? Yeah, you are audible, but little louder could be uh, greater, maybe, but you are audible. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, today uh, I'll be presenting about the analysis of tropical cyclones. Uh, using satellite observation and the different derived products which we use from satellite data for weather forecasting or for cyclone forecasting in real time basis. My uh, brief outline for the talk would be about what are cyclones, how do they form, why do they form, and where do they form. The cyclones over Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea, mostly confining over uh, North Indian Ocean. Use utilization of satellite. Uh, tracking mechanisms for the cyclonic system and different case studies for easier understanding of the satellite uh, interpretation. Uh, cyclone, like all of us are familiar and for people who are not aware, uh, it is uh, basically, a, so you can call it a low pressure system, uh, which is originating over uh, deep sea waters and associated with organized convection and confined circulation activity. So uh, this cycle or this, uh, I'll call it this event is uh, available or you can say this is present in all the ocean basins with a, a, a different or a different naming nomenclature. Tropical cyclone is the nomenclature which we are currently using over the North Indian Ocean. So when I'm saying North Indian Ocean, it is the basin encompassing your Bay of Bengal as well as your Arabian Sea. So this is the uh, region which we uh, demarcate as the North Indian Ocean. And RSMC New Delhi is uh, the uh, accredited uh, agency for issuing cyclone-related forecast warnings over the region, countries bordering the North Indian Ocean. So what are tropical cyclones? Like they are uh, systems with, uh, you can say, wind speed above 34 knots. Okay. Uh, we that those systems are categorized. Uh, the different uh, level of tropical storms or the categorization of tropical storms are there in the upcoming slide. This is just to give you an uh, idea about, or just to give you a, a, a just about what is the uh, tropical cyclone like. These values and figures would be in the upcoming slide. Any uh, any uh, cyclonic circulation, any uh, organized convection above 34 knots wind speed is categorized as a tropical, uh, you can say, cyclone, and uh, a specific name is assigned to it according to the uh, different panel and committee. So these systems, are according with the wind wind patterns, or you can say the intensity of systems, are categorized with different names over the different ocean basins, like hurricane over the North Atlantic, Northeast Pacific, typhoon over the Northwest Pacific, your severe tropical over the Southwest Pacific, and so on and so forth. So all these are the basins. So how do we understand what is the basin like? So this is the, uh, uh, you can say the demarcation of the basin or area of coverage of these events. So this uh, figure gives you an idea about the climatology of tropical cyclones from 1990 to 2004. This is from the paper. So you can see North Indian Ocean contributing to approximately 4% of the tropical cyclone over this entire ocean basin. So this is the 
uh, and again, uh, this is uh, taken from this paper. Uh, this is the distribution of the LMI or the lifetime maximum intensities of the tropical cyclone over individual sub basins. So you can see here the North Indian Ocean having the life, uh, lifetime maximum intensity of approximately 50 knots over this region. Uh, so these are the basins or these are the demarcation because when I say North Indian Ocean, North Pacific, South Indian, these are how it is they are demarcated for easier or precise forecast by the respective uh, regional med center or uh, regional specialized meteorological center. Uh, we are focusing upon the North Indian uh, Basin or North Indian Ocean, which is comprising of the Bay of Bengal and the Arabian Sea. So this figure is again uh, from the Ibitrax data of 1990 to 2010. So this figure indicates the overall, I'll say the movement or the track of the tropical storm, which has occurred during this particular period. And this is also according with respect to the intensity of the activity, which has taken place over both North and Southern Hemisphere. So this is again the same figure. Uh, this is just to give you an idea about the areas where or the uh, latitudinal area uh, demarcation about where these tropical cyclones form. So if you uh, pretty much look into this this particular figure, uh, you can observe one, one peculiar event, which is the tropical cyclone or these cyclone formation, almost I'll say negligible or very much uh, limited over your uh, 5 degree north and south of the equator. So why is that? I'll be explaining it in the coming slide. So like we know, uh, what are the basic forces over uh, for let us say uh, basic ingredients for your system or any any wave force system. So they are your frictional force. In three forces, friction, pressure gradient and Coriolis force. Frictional forces, like all we know, it is about the frictional activity between any molecule, which is uh, against the surfaces. Pressure gradient force, again, as the name suggests, it is the difference in pressure between, uh, let us say, two regions. So as you all know, pressure moves from high pressure to low pressure, and so when the gradient is more, the flow would be faster. The third parameter is the Coriolis. Uh, this might be a pretty much a tricky or a new thing for people who are not aware of this particular component. So this is a, uh, I'll call it as a fixture or the imaginary force where, which is attributed to the rotation of the earth. Okay. So what happens? Let us say you have a, uh, I will take you to this. You have a particular uh, a stream of wind in a particular hemisphere, north and south. So due to the rotation of the earth, a perpendicular movement of wind in the northern hemisphere is deflected to the right in your, uh, as a result of your Coriolis. Similar is the case with your southern hemisphere, uh, 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 wind or you can say a wind stream uh, uh, targeting the southern hemisphere gets, deflect, sorry, gets deflected to the left of the system. So that is, this is with your, with your Coriolis. Let us say when we looked into the, uh, the pressure gradient force before, which, which said like you have the difference in pressure, pressure flow from high high pressure to low pressure. When the pressure gradient is more, you have the air flow faster. So with that logic, when when we are looking into a low, when I low is the low pressure system, it should be winds perpendicular to the system. But as a result of Coriolis force, what happens? We are getting the curving of the wind, and this is the anticyclonic motion which is seen in the your cyclonic, uh, you can say the cyclone formation or any cyclonic uh, wind system. So this is again with respect to your, uh, or I'll say this is with respect to your Coriolis force. So now uh, this turning, or I'll say this this particular uh, impact is with respect to the Coriolis force. And that is the reason this Coriolis force has, uh, or I can say this is has more uh, deflection as you go away from the equator, right? So as a result, what happens? The more the deflection, you have more curving and you have 
more uh, tendency of cyclones or the formation of cyclones are increased. So that is why you don't see uh, any cyclones or pretty much marginal amount of activity along the north of five and south of five over the equator. So this is the uh, the tropical cyclone uh, uh, climatology for, for 1990 to 2020 over Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal. So you can see the total number of this uh, figure is again uh, attributed from the uh, e atlas of IMD. So you can see the total number of activities of uh, Bay of Bengal around approximately around 190 uh, form it has formed, 157 dissipated over land and 31 dissipated over the sea. Similarly, Arabian Sea, 73 has formed during this period where 20 has dissipated over land and 41 has dissipated over sea. So, uh, I would uh, like anybody, any of the student, any of the participant to, this is the figure of the last, uh, let us say, uh, 30 years. So, uh, I would like to uh, ask the <coughs> participant or anybody in that to just give an or give it in the comments about why do we see more number of cyclones in the Bay and the Arabian. And then I'll explain regarding that. So, this is the uh, 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 or I'll say the classification of the pressure or the cyclonic system which we categorize. So uh, we would have heard about uh, 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 student anybody who is not aware of this. I'll give you a basic about what does this actually mean. You will hear initially about low pressure, about cyclones. So what do they actually correspond to? So this particular or these demarcations correspond to the wind speed of the system. The low pressure area being the uh, uh, initial system with wind speed of less than 70 knots, and they have a corresponding T number. Then comes your depression. The depression is again the 17 to 27 knots, followed by deep depression 28 to 33 knots. And we call a system a cyclonic storm when you have wind speed greater than 34 knots. Again, this system intensification of system will take you through severe cyclone, very severe, extremely severe and the super cyclone. So these are the categorization based on the wind speed and the T number. There's one more classification about this. When we are looking into the synoptic charts, we have the uh, closed isobars. That too will again uh, comprehend or it will add on to this information about available wind speed in demarcating your uh, or classifying your system. So this is again the uh, global annual frequency of uh, cyclones. So you can see our basin uh, being the North Indian Ocean Basin. So the cyclone prone activity is between April to December, or I can rather say around April, May and the pre-monsoon and the post-monsoon period. So uh, this is the maximum wind speed of system which has uh, greater, uh, equal to or greater than 34 knots, which is around 5.4 and maximum wind speed of 64 knots are above. 64 knots are above is your uh, severe cyclone. More than that is your 2.5 is your value compared to your global annual frequency of 83.7 for your wind speed greater than 34. That is cyclonic storm and 44.9 for your system more than your severe cyclonic storm. Okay. So now we have all these while we have looked into what are the, how is the system or why do they form. Now let us look into the system. What are the major ingredients? which we should be looking for or which we should be targeting to understand the cyclogenesis. The grace parameter are the these uh, parameters listed here with your sea surface temperature should be greater than or equal to 26.5 degrees Celsius. There should be available relative humidity in the middle topospheric region. Uh, convective instability should be present. There should be an availability of a prerequisite system. So I, I will explain to you in the upcoming phase what are these. Sea surface temperature, as you all know, it is the temperature which is detected over the sea surface. And uh, systems are generally prone to intensify or generate over warm waters which are greater than 26.5 degrees Celsius. Then comes your middle tropospheric humidity. I will take you through that. So this is your uh, 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 model-based uh, SST over the these months and the available uh, TCH, which is your tropical cyclone heat potential. So you can see over the Indian basin, uh, during these particular April and May, you have 
higher uh, cyclone heat potential or you can say higher signatures for tropical cyclone to evolve over these months. Similar is the case during a pre-monsoon. You can see during November and December, mostly having higher values of, uh, I'd say, TCHP because of the conducive condition over the North Indian Ocean. Next is the, your uh, formation of the system. Like I told you prior, why do we have the systems? Uh, why don't we have systems? Five degree north and south of the equator. That is again uh, corresponding to your Coriolis effect. Then it's the pre-existing system. Uh, when I say pre-existing system, it can be any system, like uh, maybe a, a association of a trough or there might be any uh, wind propagation over the system. So these will fuel the, uh, let us say, cyclone or any system which is about to form. So these are the surface charts which you can see here, the synoptic chart, which gives you an idea about the, uh, the wind scenario or already existing scenario which fuels the cyclonic uh, development. Then it's your low level uh, uh, moisture. Uh, low level, when I say it is the uh, 1.5 kilometer above mean sea level, when I say it in terms of pressure, it is around 850 hectopascal. When I say mid level, it is 3 kilometer above the mean sea level or 700 hectopascal. So, existence of moisture in your low level, uh, low level area, low level uh, atmospheric level and vorticity. Uh, vorticity is again your uh, I can say in a simpler terms, it is the localized spinning of your air due to rotation. Okay, during a cyclonic activity, or uh, uh, let us say during the uh, genesis of a cyclone, vorticity again plays a, a huge role. Where uh, positive vorticity, a cyclonic active a cyclonic storm gives you, or it uh, results in your positive vorticity. The positive vorticity values uh, is again a I can say ingredient or a contributor which you can uh, identify from the uh, generation of the system. And then you have the wind shear. Wind shear is again, it is basically your uh, uh, change in wind speed with respect to height. Okay. Uh, one thing which you have to be, uh, which you have to like kind of understand here is the role of wind shear because uh, all these systems which I discussed, let it be vorticity, let it be moisture, let it be SST. They are not, con they are all global or I'll say meteorological parameters. We are analyzing these parameters for specific weather data. In our case, we are uh, discussing about cyclones. So not necessary, these parameters would be similar for all the weather events which we'll be looking for. So that is, uh, I'm specifically explaining that for this wind shear concept. When we are looking into thunderstorm, let us say, for example, thunderstorm thrives in the area of high vertical wind shear. You can see from this figure about the system or you can say the uh, dispersion of the system. Whereas when it comes to cyclone, you can visualize cyclone being a, a band or a closely knit band of clouds or I can say closely bit a column of your air over a particular and associated cloud band, right? So when we have strong vertical wind shear, what happens? The system gets I'll say uh, it, it when the system when the cyclone is moving towards let us say a uh, area of strong vertical wind shear. So we expect or the cyclone is expected to shear and uh, you expect the system to weaken comparatively to the previous two. Similar is the case when the system is moving to a peak wind shear. So we see when the system is the cyclonic system is moving towards a weak wind shear, sorry, weak vertical wind shear. What happens? The area becomes conducive for the cyclonic activity to propagate ahead and maintain or intensify uh, its, uh, I'll say, the category of cyclone. So this has to be very much clear. Like for cyclones to thrive, or when I say thrive, for cyclones to sustain, you need weak wind shear, whereas for thunderstorm, we need, we say we have strong vertical wind shear. So coming to the climatology of these parameters, various parameters over both the bases, Arabian Sea and the Bay. So first one is the SST, uh, sea surface temperature. So you can see both these, uh, I'll say the points plotted corresponding to Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal. So you can see SST values uh, comparatively high during your, uh, I'll say uh, earlier part, or I'll say from April till May, that is during your pre-monsoon season. 
similarly you have the increased sst value during your post monsoon season and as a post monsoon season it is from october to december you can see the values increase over both the basins though you have the sst value comparatively on higher side in bay arabian sea also exhibits higher uh, values of sst during these particular two seasons coming into the relative humidity which we saw as one more criteria one more ingredient for the system to sustain you can see relative humidity peaking up from your uh, i'll say from your may all the way till your uh, uh, november or december so both the bay arabian sea and the bay of bengal you have increased relative humidity during this period next the third one is your this is your relative vortexity like what is it is what i told you like uh, you can consider it as a uh, localized spinning of air over a region so here like i told you cyclone activity is associated with positive vorticity so you can see positive values of vorticity in around uh, you can say fast like from may to you can say end of april till your uh, june month which is prominent here in both the basins where you have the winds and bay of bengal depicting the same similarly you have higher values of vorticity during your post molex year november and december months over both the bays as arabian and the bay of bengal last parameter is your the parameter which i just discussed prior to this slide the vertical wind shear vertical wind shear you can see the the uh, peculiar or uh, i say the crucial information here is you can see very high vertical wind shear during your monsoon season and both the basin so this you can kind of corroborate with the issue or with the concept you don't have or the cyclonic activity is pretty much less during your monsoon season over the region so these are the total number of uh, super cyclones that formed taken this from mohpatra et al so these are the super cyclones which have formed from 1965 to 2019 over the uh uh not in the ocean so you can see from 1977 you have either it's a decadal activity there are three four multi decadal over the system the latest one being the super cyclone being amphan which was uh, which generated in 2020 and made landfall over sundarbans and west bengal so this is the trend of the cyclone like this is again a pretty uh a uh, uh, pretty much a normal or i say a common question so okay we are looking into cyclones we are looking into we are hearing about cyclones and some we uh, intensification of cyclones in this period or i'll say what these years so are they actually increasing are they exhibiting any particular trend so this is over the bay of bengal so you can see the graphs here corresponding to different categories of cyclonic storm vscs being your very severe cyclonic storm ESCS is your extremely severe cyclonic storm. SES is your severe cyclonic storm, and D is the depression and above. So you can see there is actually a decreasing trend in uh, the frequency of your depression, cyclonic storm, severe cyclonic storm, and very severe cyclonic storm over your uh, North Indian Ocean during this uh, particular period from sixty five to two thousand nineteen. Now looking into the Arabian Sea. Arabian Sea, uh, similar with the similar kind of study uh, done by Ramu Patel et al., you can see a uh, 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 increasing trend of frequency of cyclonic storm and above the severe cyclonic and very severe cyclonic storm during this particular uh, data period. This is again the uh, cyclonic disturbances in a map which I have taken from uh, the Atlas of IMD. So these are the cyclonic uh, tracks. over your uh, arab bay of bengal and arabian sea from 1891 to 2020 so by just looking into this figure this figure is self explanatory you can see maximum number of cyclones in the north indian ocean being formed from your bay of bengal and comparatively pretty much lesser activity over your arabian sea and you can see the, more the system formation and the climatological movement of the north the northwestward movement in the bay and in the uh, arabian sea you have uh, uh, landfall or i'll say the movement of system mostly north and northeast
so these are few examples of uh, activity or the cyclones which have devastated over the north indian regions of north indian uh, india north indian ocean so this is the bola cyclone of 1970 which had uh, ravaged major parts of bangladesh with extreme catastrophic loss so this cyclone and this is the satellite image from nova which is showing the cyclone of 1970 this is the uh, chittagong cyclone during the satellite era so one minute average wind speed being approximately 250 kmph and this system again caused extreme devastation over bangladesh and resulting in loss of lives and displacement of uh, extreme number of people and livestock the one this is over the indian region the odisha super cyclone of 1999 so this again made landfall over puri with highest winds of approximately more than 260 km per hour and the lowest pressure approximately 912 hectopascal uh, uh, extreme maximum many people perished in this unfortunate event with uh, extreme loss to the hectare and the uh, public this is a, uh, another system uh, over uh, landfall which has taken place over myanmar and again here you see maximum life lost during nargi so this these uh, examples right from bola cyclone to all these examples are been shown uh, just to give you an uh, 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 overview or an idea about how devastating can cyclones be they can uh, rip apart the area with extreme loss to people and the entire locality okay uh, so now we have looked into the activity of cyclones how are they form why do they form so this is a, a, a simple or i'll say a basic very very, very basic representation of how are they forming uh, like as you know like all these parameters the like gray parameters you can just uh, recollect so you have the incoming solar radiation solar radiation heats up the ocean it is uh, heating up uh, higher scale let us say more than 26 degrees celsius what happens with this you have the Uh, the parcels raise it becomes buoyant it raises in the atmosphere so the raising parcels are raising and you have this uh, rising over the level and this results in the uh, condensation of the parcels and, and you have the formation of cloud and then you have the uh, this is again your i'll say uh, the your uh, clouds or you can say convergence happening here in the lower levels and your winds are diverging or moving apart in the upper level forming your annual lake structures this resulting in again the rain activity over the regions so this is again this is a, a chain or a chain cycle with this fueling activity and you have these strong or i'll say the uh, winds around the uh, you can say the cloud bands near the eye wall and then you have the subsidence there and this system keeps improve, in, increasing and uh, the state or i'll say the impact or the uh, system gets intensified in this particular process as long as it is getting this moisture and the fueling mechanism being provided so this keeps going up, uh, approximately and this is your overall uh, uh, average width of a cyclone being approximately you can say around 500 to uh, 2000 km so this is the movement of tropical cyclone uh, this is the uh, uh, just the pictorial representation which i have taken uh, this is again to make things simpler for uh, uh, people who might be uh, confused about uh, like we are issuing uh, let us say a forecast about uh, this is the center or this is the point of cyclone and then in a basin uh, we cannot give any other point unless we are specifying the location of the point and the direction of the point so this is what we are uh, uh, how we are uh, comprehending that with this uh, wind direction so that is how we let us say a point is at a a point is the next point is at b uh, we say and one more thing i here uh, i would like to mention in the basin with respect to the the cyclone or i'll say the cyclone information or cyclone bulletin we have the north indian ocean bifurcated into different basins uh, or i'll say different categories like you have the north uh, i'll say southwest bay southeast bay central bay north bay similarly in the arabian sea you have the east central bay west central bay so these demarcations makes it uh, easier for the uh, disaster managers or the person involved for swift action and the government agencies to get involved to exactly identify the location of the system so this this with this example you can uh, kind of say a particular let us say center is at point a and 
with respect to this wind direction, I can say the system has moved to point B in the uh, you can say north north westward direction. Okay, now uh, okay, we have uh, got a fair idea about what are cyclones, where do they form, how do they form, what are the ingredients that are fueling a cyclone, what are the ingredients that result in the weakening of the system, how are the systems or the devastating. How, what are the impacts a tropical cyclone can have? How can it be reduced with improved forecasting by lessening or giving a accurate forecast? And what is the scenario over your North Indian Ocean? We have looked into all these things. Now we look into how is satellite helping in tracking the tropical cyclone? So satellite, there are various tools like satellite data like I say, uh, tropical cyclones are monitored with, uh, uh, I'll say, multiple data sets or multiple data platforms. You have your NWP models, you have your observation data like synoptic data, buoy data, then you have your radar data, uh, then you have your, uh, uh, let us say, specific region wise model data. So, the advantage of satellite data here, which I like to say, system in a deep ocean. Satellite data is the only source of observation which we'll be getting for accurate or else understanding the location of the system and the intensity of the system. So uh, this is just to showcase that you can see the, the winds in the left are the, the ASCAT winds. And these again, uh, these winds again gives you an uh, give you an identification or an indication about the, the cyclonic circulation and the maximum wind speed associated with that. Then you have this is the the older image of the Kalpana where you can see this cyclonic activity in the deep ocean. This image, the, the green demarcated image, is your uh, you can say multi sat winds experiment, which is again giving you the indication about the wind speed, its location, its different speed in the different quadrants. The last image here, this is your microwave image. Again, microwave image is my it becomes crucial because this can penetrate the clouds and give you the exact center, whereas the visible and IR will be obscured with your cloud activity. That is, that is what I have mentioned here. How do we use the visible image? So visible image during daytime uh, becomes a pretty much uh, a, a very good source of information for your eye detection, eye detection of your uh, cyclones. So the only issue with visible is uh, it is again acting on your reflective channel and you don't have uh, information after insulation. Again, to keep it simple, once this information available only until your daylight, you don't get information round the clock. Compared to IR with the inside current setup which we have, IR is at a spatial resolution of 4 kilometers and this gives you a comparatively better, uh, I'll say, monitoring of systems as this is available round the clock uh, information from the IR base instrument. Then you have the IR imagery. This is with respect to different cloud bands which we use. And this is again used for your Dwarak technique to identify the location and intensity of the storms from your uh, satellite data. Then we have the water vapor channel. Water vapor channel again plays a, a very important role in understanding the system or uh, we can uh, understand or I'll say the movement of the upper or upper level systems from water vapor like we can see the steering currents or the upper westerly flow systems which will help us in uh, identifying or detecting the movement of the system in a in the direction is it going to recur is it going to make a northeastward movement or is it going to go to the south of the system this plays a very important role now uh, I'll uh, uh, explain about the recent cases and how are we able to utilize or what are the images, uh, the products which we use for identifying the systems from the satellite perspective. So I have started with the super cyclone system of Ampan, which we formed in the uh, May 2020. So this is the first super cyclone after the Odisha super cyclone, which I had shown prior, 1999. Lowest pressure of approximately 920 hectopascal was observed during this period. The peculiarity, peculiarity of this system was this made landfall and the system maintained the cyclone intensity almost 
you can say 15 to 18 hours after landfall resulting in devastation uh, extreme rainfall activity over the uh, west bengal region so now looking into the satellite based uh, uh, how can the satellite aid in the identifying or tracking the uh, your cyclonic activity so this this uh, uh, product is from the insat uh, 3d satellite so one which i have shown here is the uh, the visible product this is at 11:30 ist of the 18th uh, may 2020 uh, i am not sure whether all of you are able to see there is a prominent eye which is being detected from the visible image you can see a very prominent eye, a black dot, to say it much more simpler terms, is able to be spotted with respect to your, your uh, visible uh, imagery. So this is your uh, your uh, color enhancement image from the, the BD curve image. Again, here uh, it shows the cloud bands or the cloud flaring over this particular region on this uh, 18th of May in association with this uh, Amphan super cyclone. Next product which you look into is the are the vorticity product. Vorticity, like I told you, they are an indicator of the system's intensification or system's current state. The higher the vorticity, we say the system is thriving to a through a region of higher vorticity and it is uh, in uh, in a favorable environment for tropical cyclone intensification or movement. So this vorticity plot which I have showed here is at 200 hectopascal. 200 hectopascal approximately you can say around 10 kilometers above mean sea level. So this system is having the vorticity values all the way till 10 kilometers. So these are very good indicators of how strong the system is and how they are there, how uh, 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 impactful are these systems going to be. This is your uh, vorticity which I showed. These are uh, layer based vorticity right from your 850 till your 200 hectopascal. So we see all the layer vorticity to uh, delineate how strong or what or till what level is the system uh, having an impact. So one image which you can see this, this one, this is your low level convergence. The low level convergence is the, the animation which I showed uh, prior, where you have the low level winds converging over the region. So again, uh, what does low level convergence mean? It is nothing but a converging a convergence of your winds over a particular point. So what happens when wind converge over region, it raises and you have uh, at higher levels, you have a, a subsidence or divergence. So you have, you are seeing uh, convergence value uh, range of approximately 60 in association with this particular system. So then we look into the divergence plot. Divergence is again around approximately 50 in association with the system. So all these derived products are, or these uh, products will aid you in specifically or giving you uh, it will give you a clear picture about the system's location and its uh, tilt or its movement uh, in the uh, you can say from these charts so uh, then you have this this is the wind shear like i told you when the system is moving through a low wind shear area like you, you can see from this figure uh, the values are mentioned here in the uh, right hand side System moving through a area of low wind shear results in, uh, you can say, fueling that system or you can, to keep it in a simpler terms, I can say, weakening of the system is less feasible or less possible when it is moving through a area of low wind shear. So these are the uh, precipitable water uh, images we have uh, taken from Mimic. So uh, you can see this is the uh, uh, precipitable water image uh, taken over the region. This is the uh, Indian boundary here, which you can see. So you can see the intrusion or uh, the increase of warm, moist air around the system and the moist air continuously in the system uh, uh, getting fed into the system. And you can see from here uh, around this, this area, you can see a light, uh, slight reduction of the intensity of the system uh, prior to the uh, landfall activity. So this is a, a chart of the precipitable water from Mimic. And this product is the uh, microwave product. Like I told you, uh, visible and the IR will have its uh, limitations of uh, penetrating the cloud information or it gives you the information on the top of the cloud, whereas your microwave information has uh, uh, properties which can penetrate through the cloud and give you the exact signature. 
so this is the rgb product from your uh, sira uh, this is again the color which you can see here uh, on the left hand image the uh, red color corresponding to the infrared data the green being the water vapor channel and the blue or the bluer uh, blue color shade corresponding to a uh, amso winds of the 89 gigahertz so the right image corresponding here is uh, showing the uh, uh, it is just an animation of the uh, cyclonic storm amphan uh, over the bay you can see so you can see the system how it has progressed right from you can say bay it is currently over your uh, west central bay how is the system progressing ahead with respect to time and the cloud band or you can say the, uh, the movement of the system here uh, somewhere around 86 feet and you can see cloud bands almost 500 400 500 kilometers west of the system so this is how intense these tropical cyclones are and how devastating they can be this is another uh, storm which i have taken uh, this is over another basin this is over arabian sea basin this is uh, Tote, extremely severe storm which had taken up in Arabian Sea during 2021. So this is the most intense storm which had uh, occurred after the Kandala cyclone in 1998. This system I had specifically taken because this had impacted all the states bordering the west coast and it had far-reaching impact all the way till Rajasthan. Even after making landfall over Gujarat, the system had north and northeastward movement and it gave copious rain over Gujarat and even in Rajasthan. These were the, the numbers which I written here correspond to the date of the system and the specific uh, wind speed of the system mentioned in north. System originating over, you can say, Lakshadweep, where at, uh, I'll say it initiated with the depression on the 14th of May 2021. Uh, and it went all the way till uh, you can say 19th of May, making landfall around 18 UTC of 17th May as a very severe cyclonic storm over Gujarat. It gave extremely heavy rainfall over major districts of Gujarat and went all the way till North Gujarat and even Rajasthan, giving them extremely heavy rainfall. Extremely heavy rainfall in in IMD terms are uh, rainfall which occurs. The 24 hour rainfall is more than uh, 20 centimeters uh, over that particular station, 21 centimeters above the station. So this is the, uh, the I, I will say the utilization of the how is the satellite data aiding in the this particular storm detection. Similarly, I have taken the same set of product or the same or this uh, system. You can again see a prominent eye here over. Uh, you can see the way somewhere around Maharashtra coast this is on the 16th of May. And then again, you have the system or I'll say the, the BD curve or the enhancement color enhancement image again on the left. So all these you can you can actually uh, pretty well see the eye which is prominent over these. Both of these are from the inset and the remaining products are from the thing. The right hand product again corresponding to the positive vorticity at 200 Pascal, which is more than around 200 10 to the power minus 10 per second. Coming into the convergence product, this is the convergence product. Again, you can see confined convex uh, convergence. Uh, this convergence again at the lower level. Uh, lower level convergence is uh, the data between your uh, 0.9 kilometer to 1.5 kilometer. That is uh, around 925 hectopascal to 850 hectopascal means level. This is your low level convergence. Similarly, you can see the upper level divergence over this particular region and coming into the wind shear product this this system had uh, a proper moisture feeding which resulted in the system not getting intensified not getting weakened even after landfall. i'll show you in the upcoming slide so this is the path it had taken and uh, traveled through an area of again uh, comparatively lower wind shear this is the uh, same uh, mimic product which i have taken from 14th may till 19th may to analyze that particular cyclone so you can see uh, this is the uh, Indian landmass and this is the uh, area where cyclone had formed. You can see the supply of moist air all the way here in the system and system uh, uh, resulted in rapid intensification of system during 16 to 17. So uh, what is rapid intensification in cyclone? Rapid intensification is a 
uh, stage of cyclone where in 24 hours the wind speed is exceeding 30 knots between two systems that is considered as a rapid intensification so uh, even the uh, peculiarity of this system even after landfall uh, there was it, it didn't expect or didn't uh, 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 indulge or you know, conclude through a cold or uh, dry air into the system so what happened the system maintained the intensity of cyclonic storm and with the upper level uh, mid latitude trough it gave uh, extreme rainfall activity like i told over gujarat and parts of rajasthan so this is the product uh, uh, similar product is shown before the rgb product from the thira uh, showing the landfall moment uh, point and the, the time it uh, below uh, gives you the this value gives you the uh, time in utc at the moment of the system the right hand image again the uh, inside 3d image of the particular uh, animation, I'll say for that particular uh, Tote system, you can see the system slowly uh, giving rains right from Lakshadweep, Kerala, Karnataka, Goa, Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Rajasthan. So it had impacted all these areas, resulting in rainfall activity and uh, losses to the property and people. After uh, again, now uh, this these are activities which I've seen. Now we have from the inside 3D setup with the uh, help from uh, SAC and uh, MC of Hassan, uh, we have this uh, uh, specified or it's a sector-based specific rapid scan activity which we carry out during cyclonic storm events. So uh, during this these events, uh, we uh, specifically mention or we specifically demarcate a box or a region which we are interested for the satellite to scan. So what happens with that? we get a enhanced or a higher temporal resolution of the product. So the products which we are receiving from the inside 3D and 3 dr both of these satellites are uh, geostationary satellites. They give us a product with a temporal resolution of 30 minutes. So we get data after every 30 minutes from these geostationary platform setup. So during the cyclone activity or after initiation of the rapid scan activity, you can see the previous image which I showed, you have the entire full disk coverage and then you have the Asia coverage and this rapid scan is a specific sector sector scan which uh, you can uh, just look into here. This is the, uh, a particular uh, domain which we had uh, mentioned. You can see here uh, how the system or how it is uh, over only a particular region uh, giving you information of uh, over that particular lat long box. What happens? Like I told you, the temporal resolution increases and we get this product during cyclone activity or during rapid scan activity at approximately every five minutes. So this helps us or this aids us in uh, giving or uh, understanding the, uh, the system or uh, detecting the system and uh, uh, comprehending the uh, condition of that particular system. The left one which you can see is the rapid scan activities that taken place during super cyclone Ampon and the, the right one being the ECS Tote. In recent times, we have also started uh, getting data from, uh, again, I'll give my uh, gratitude to NRSE for providing us the data. So we are operationally processing the Oceanside data over the uh, Indian region. You can see the two storms, the latest storms which you can see, Oceanside data for uh, it is getting uh, uh, a two spatial resolution of 12 kilometers and 25 kilometers. So this this is for the cyclone state where you can see uh, pretty much uh, you can see very good signatures from this uh, ocean side winds. And the right one being the the latest system Michong over December 2020. Uh, that is it with respect to my talk. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you a lot uh, for the nice talk. I am sure that. Participant had really uh, came to know the details about that cyclone thing. So there are a few questions even without cyclone as well. But now that question answer session will be coordinated by Dr. Rohini Bhavad. But before that, if you answer your uh, PPT, usually we do a photo session. Okay. So, so Tagi sir, oh. Uh, welcome, uh, Vivishivan, sir. So, 
Taggy sir, can you switch on your camera and uh, but yes, sir. Uh, 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 Dr. Pauli, if you can. Yes, sir, I'll be taking the photo notes. Taggy, Taggy sir, if you could please switch on your camera if you are available. I'm taking a few before he joins it. Okay. You will have to enable me to okay, 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 open the yeah. video. Yeah. Oh. yeah, you are enabled now. Is it opening? No. One second, sir. Hold on, hold it. At this now? I think he left. He'll join it again. Yeah. yeah, by that time, if you can. Uh, but yes, sir, you, yeah, camera, you need to little bit tilted. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. You ready? Yeah, if the Gisha joins in between, uh, we can again take the link. So yes. now, I think uh, Dr. Rohini. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sagata. So, nice lecture. There are a few questions. The first one is by Vijay Kumar. Many literature suggests SST greater than 27.5 degrees Celsius for cyclone, but you said SST greater than 26.5 degrees Celsius. Any reason for that? Again, uh, 26.5 is again taken from that gray uh, category. So just with one parameter, uh, it doesn't mean if I'm having 27.5 degrees above SSC, uh, yeah, I'm going to get a cyclone. And that is why it mentioned about five to six parameters which are crucial. Many instances we have seen uh, SSTs with much higher values, but you don't get any other conducive condition, like you don't have a mid system, you don't have a weak shear. So it is again variable. This is with respect to that particular gray psychologist condition uh, where you have this particular value corresponding to other parameters also. That's it. Uh, another question is by Renu. Uh, please explain what is P number for classification of LPs. Sorry? P number. Okay. For... Yeah. P number is again, uh, uh, you can say the number which we are given for 24 hour intensity change. A T number corresponds to your intensification of the system. Like uh, when you are looked into that uh, PPT uh, flight, as and when we are going from each system, let us say from low pressure, from depression, cyclone, severe. So you have the increase of T number or the intensity increase in every 24 hours. So that is what we uh, refer to as T number. Yeah, uh, in, 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 the, oh, okay, one in the meantime, Tagisha joined. So uh, if Tagisha can come to... Yeah. Yeah, so uh, follow me if you could do on. I think volume is freezed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Maybe we can have the, before the time. Hmm? Okay, you, you continue with the questions. Okay, so continuation with the T number question. There is another question they have asked for finding the intensity of cyclone on T scale. Is Dimorak's technique used still used by IND? Yes, yes. So our advanced techniques are there, uh, AI based work techniques. So multiple techniques are being used for uh, uh, track and or you can see intensity and the location estimation. Explain role of vertical wind shear during monsoon. Vertical wind shear, like I told you, uh, you can see the vertical wind shear. Like I told you, it is again your uh, system or the uh, activity which is mostly confined to your, uh, uh, I'll say the extent of the system right for thunderstorms we say thunderstorms thrive over regions of your uh, high vertical wind shear okay and when i was explaining about cyclones cyclones you with high vertical wind shear you are going to get the 
tearing of the system or the weakening of the system. So uh, during monsoon, or I'll say uh, monsoon is again a, a, a pretty term where uh, specific areas, let us say you have a high vertical, you can have like during monsoon activity, you have the initial, I'll say localized thunderstorm activity. So you have high vertical wind shear during the period for the uh, activity or I'll say thunderstorm activity to try. Uh, next question is from Girish Kumar. How will he has two questions? Right? How will global warming of the Hadley circulation mm -hmm. number one extend the latitudinal range of tropical cyclone and number two will there be change in trajectories? Uh, see, I uh, more or less the same uh, point I had taken up in the the uh, slide which I shown for Arabian chain wave Bengal with the recent trend or I can say from the last latest trends which you can see uh, you can see the uh, cyclones or i'll say the cyclonic disturbances uh, on a decreasing trend in the bay right and over the arabian sea you are uh, seeing the increased trend comparatively increased trend over the arabian sea during these particular uh, periods Um, okay, another one uh, from Anonymous. Is chaos theory applicable to cyclones? And if yes, how to use it for forecasting? Uh, see, uh, chaos theory, uh, again, uh, one which you are forecasting is again uh, a very chaos environment. Right? Chaos theory, uh, specifically with usage of your model, uh, all these models, you have AIML models, they anyway incorporate your Okay, I'll see and fuzzy logic. Based on that, you can comprehend or improve your weather forecast. Uh, there are two two questions. Uh, not sure what they want to ask. There is one from Murli Krishna. The Bay of Bengal is more saline and warmer. But yeah, but what? Okay, no, I I had asked why are uh, uh, oh cyclones so formed. He has answered. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> Umso has answered. Yeah, Murli Krishna has answered that. Yeah. So, Bay of Bengal has, uh, you can say, conducive activity because you have, yeah, comparatively more influx of, you can say, uh, water. There is a proper mixing taking place. So, all these are uh, environment or system which is thriving for the more cyclonic activity there. Compared to Arabian Sea, Arabian Sea has a uh, relatively lesser acid. And you don't have the influx of uh, so many, like in over Bay, you have Brahmaputra and other Ganges tributaries, water. Arabian Sea, you don't have that mixing or that particular circle, uh, activity taking. That is the uh, major reason. Yeah, I have a small query. Sorry to interrupt. So, when uh, the river is contributing to the ocean, so salinity would be less in that case. Yes, right? yes, yes. So, and no, for... the this is about the mixing, the mixing taking place. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you. Um, another one, I don't know, it is about plastic clouds, which is identified in Japan. So, it is not related. Yeah, it's not related to the cyclones. So. Oh, there is one more new one. What are some most useful algorithms used in cyclone forecasting up to date? Okay. Uh, see, uh, cyclone, uh, there are two perspectives of this. One is the uh, where you are uh, taking a particular case you are uh, utilizing the techniques which you have, let us say any advanced technique you have, and then it comes to an operational scenario. Operational scenario for cyclone forecasting, uh, we are having, like I told you, a multiple usage of like you have uh, AI-based technique, you have the Dwarak-based technique, so then you have the synoptic-based uh, chart uh, identification, then you have the model-based number, you would identify the pattern from the cy uh, cyclone, what is the pattern like, what is the pattern-based T number, then you look into the model-based T number, then you are looking into the 24-hour percentage. All these things are uh, utilized at one, uh, I'll say one go for coming out with one particular uh, range or one particular value. Value is when I'm saying here is the center, center of the cyclone and the T number. Various techniques are being used. Okay, I think uh, those were the questions. So back to you, So if any panelist has any question, because we have collected all the questions from audience, if any panelist has any question. Yeah, I will ask one question. Uh, 
regarding this Ra. You have given a wonderful picture. Any good lecture? Good lecture. Uh, okay, I am Dr. Baby Simon. Yes, sir, I know, sir. Yeah, Ex-Israel scientist. Okay. Uh, see, this uh, Sera, this uh, RGB, how is the present uh, get data getting from the AMSU A, AMSU B, which you have shown? What is the present condition? Uh, sir, currently AMSU B we are uh, getting. Sir. This is again taken from the Sera archive product. But do you get, are you getting it now? Uh, this is for 20, sir. 2020, I have shown. After that? After that? No, after that, we are not. Uh, using. Ah, that's what I am telling. Okay. That's a very good uh, uh, this one picture you have shown. It's very utilized. Thank and you. scatterometer also you can get. Scatterometer also, more you can interact with the SAC people because now I am not there. You can interact and get the data on live. Okay. From yes. uh, Ocean Side 2, Ocean Side 3. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that is very useful for the assimilation in the models for as per well, NWP models, which is predicting the cyclones. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, uh, I think now it's a time to conclude the session. Uh, before concluding the session, if uh, Bhatia, sir, or Taki, sir, you want to share some words. Okay, uh, I have one question for Dr. Shivin. Yes. Uh, the question is, you mentioned the uh, wind shear. It's important. But during monsoon, it's quite high. And uh, sometimes during operations, we find that uh, the department gives the indication that by such and such date, a low pressure area is going to form. Say, 25th November, there was one indication yes. and uh, we find at certain time that it doesn't form on the day you indicate but maybe after two days or sometime sometime it does form on the same day i'm not saying it never pops but at certain times you find after two days uh, do you think that it is due to wind shear at that time also can we say that uh, if we see wind shear product uh, it has not formed because of higher wind shear can we say that uh, sir, actually, no, then we have to again analyze various other products also, sir. Like we have the, let us say, are we getting the uh, mid level humidity? Is it available there? Is okay. it like we are having like vorticity values? Is it there? Or is there any intrusion of, you can say, cold air? So these also parameters will be coming into picture along with this. Okay, okay. Uh, you see that the, after the, it doesn't form on the day you indicate it. So do you analyze and find out? Yes, 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 sir. Okay. And my second, uh, it's not a question, but a comment. Uh, I hope that in your next talk, uh, you are going to indicate uh, how you analyze and how you find out T number. Yes, yes. Are yes. you going to do that? Yes, 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 sir. Because... Okay. I have kept that specifically for the practical class. Because okay, that, thought, that will be practical. Okay. Yes, because sir, I thought initially I'm, I'll just give an idea about what are actually cyclones. Because in okay. it, I'm immediately starting with the practical. I think many people will not. Okay, okay. That is fine. Idea. It's fine. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So uh, let's. Uh, I asked the president, uh, Taggy sir, if you now. Yeah. Just for a few last words uh, before ending the session. Yeah, uh, well, uh, Sibin had covered um, the both uh, the basic uh, background information about the cyclones, which is essential to understand uh, application, the use of satellite data, and the next talk, which is going to cover the number analysis so he is built up nicely and uh, also uh, uh, the important part which the satellite data does provide is uh, in, in the data assimilation uh, part for the numerical models which is so important uh, so we have now a plethora of science, satellites which provide both from the inset and geostationary satellites and Polar orbiting satellite, the SST, ocean uh, uh, heat potential and winds there by scatterometer winds. All these are very important part for monitoring and using this data into 
into the numerical models and for predictions. Yes, there are challenges uh, as far as the Bhatias have brought out the genesis uh, predictions, uh, the exact date and time uh, because of uh, that state of flux. There are no, there are many parameters which probably don't satisfy uh, the criteria for the further development. But yes, this needs to be uh, again uh, analyzed and see that why didn't we uh, able to predict the genesis on the as predicted. So all these are that will lead to the further improvements in, in the cyclone prediction. Thank you. Thanks a lot to all the participants. Uh, next week uh, again we will be available at 3 p.m. Uh, with a practical note with uh, Mr. Shivin Balakri. No, Dr. Swartha, uh, before you end, uh, I just want to make one point. It's regarding the uh, response of the participant to the exercise uh, which has been given by me on 9th. So is there any indication in the chat box, any comments have come, what have they found? Uh, how do we handle that part? Mm, yeah, sir, we did, today we didn't receive anything. I okay. think again, as a reminder, we can send an email to all the participants. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. But within a two, three days, I will update you. So, but what can be done is suppose somebody wants to, uh, uh, doesn't want to wait for the next uh, week, he can send an email uh, to me with a copy to you. I mean, I'm interested okay. to find out what have they found. What did they observe on the two things which I asked specifically? Yeah, okay? before concluding the session, I missed out one big thing. Vote okay. of thanks. So let's okay. I call Dr. Pogolobi for the vote of thanks. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I'll share my screen if it's visible to all of you. Yeah. yeah. We express our gratitude to uh, Shri Sibin Balakrishnan for his insightful lecture on analyzing tropical cyclones through satellite products. Uh, my most sincere appreciation goes to Sampa President Dr. Dyaki. Professor Someshwar sir, Professor Paira sir, and Dr. Bhatia sir for their invaluable presence and enthusiastic guidance. I also wish to congratulate Dr. Rohini ma'am for hosting the question and answer sessions and Professor Paira for coordinating the moderation of sessions seamlessly in all the lectures of the Satellite Meteorological Series. Finally, a big thank you to the uh, participants worldwide for your engaging presence and the insightful discussions and questions you brought to the table. Thank you all. Thank you, Polomi. And thank you. Uh, that thank you. To remind me all that, yes. Okay. <laughs> because it was skipped from my mind. So, bye now. We will again meet. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you.